Welcome back, this is Dan Havey with another AI quick tip. And what we're gonna do today is we're going to fix up an image I have right here in Photoshop. Where this came from is it was actually generated in OpenAI, it was a, a GPT in there that was used to create thumbnails for videos. And this is what the result came out as. And I didn't like all of the signage on here because obviously you can see, unless we're on an alien planet or something, I don't think this is any uh, any language known to man anywhere and so what I did is I came in last night and I played around with this a bunch and here was the result I came up with is where we cleaned everything out now of course you had this big huge banner up here at top you had uh, you had some text up here in the front of the building right here, the corner of the building, then down here, and then a big thing right here in the front, I'll flip it back there in a minute, a smaller sign right here, a sign here, and a sign up here. So let me just go back in here. So you got a sign right here, here, here and here and so I'll flip back and forth so you can see where they went to and what we came up with and since then uh, I've been working on it some more and actually came up with some better uh, versions of this as well and then again over here like I said you had a sign right here on the front of the building and this here really turned out nicely because you could actually see the fine work in the wood in here that matches the other windows around it same thing with what's behind here on the corner it matched it up really well. And so it does a good job, but the hard part is getting the area that you want changed, fixed, uh, picked out perfectly. So I'm gonna show you a couple of tricks that I learned by doing this. So first thing we're gonna do is just take out the big one up top here. This is obviously the easiest one of the bunch. So we're just gonna come in and we're going to paint around the first one up here. And in a case like this, you wanna go extra wide to be able to pick up all the background around it. And that's one of the things I definitely found is sometimes you wanna go wide, sometimes you wanna go really skinny and you gotta to try to figure out between the two of them. And you just test it and you regenerate and regenerate and eventually you get there. So I just put one box around here just using the rectangle tool and now I'm gonna go shift and I'm going to create a secondary box below it and when I do that you're gonna see I overlap those boxes a little bit and what it'll do is it'll actually turn it all into one box so there's no line up here above where I think it says a reimagined here um, and then it just goes down around it so what we're gonna do now is click on generative fill and we're going to click on generate as long as you don't put any text in there it will just pick up what is around it and paint it as a new background and normally especially in something like this where we're just painting out part of the sky it should do a really good job of picking it up so there you go you get three different variations on it in case you have never used this tool before let me bring my microphone down here and probably be able to hear me better and uh, we can click on our three variations they show up over here the three different variations and let me see here I think I like that one the best you can also pick out the three variations variations between this here and if you want to you can click on generate again you can generate this as many times as need be to be able to get something that looks good so now let's work on a couple of these other uh areas here and what I'm going to show you is let's let's go back here first to what we had here so this is what I ended up with last night and I was like okay well that's good enough even though it's kind of doesn't look that great but playing around with it this morning let me show you what I came up with let me turn okay let's leave that one there and is that it okay so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in and then we will move around here so we can see this. So here's what we have now. So let me show you the original was that, and I ended up with this. So that looks like a building. Let me hit my stop button there on my phone. And uh, what I came up with yesterday was this clunky old thing right here, which like I said, doesn't look very good. And now what we have is this here with a window in there. So I think that looks really pretty cool. So let's take this out and let's just try to recreate this one again, because uh, there's a couple of different tools we can use. Obviously we'll come back over here and I already have one of them turned on we will turn that back on there so let me show you what we got here we have a lasso tool a polygon lasso tool and a magnetic lasso tool I've never used the magnetic one I'm not quite sure what that does but the lasso tool is the default so we're gonna click on that 
And we're going to come in here and we're going to say, okay, well, let's try to lasso around this thing. Well, the very first thing I tried to do is we're just going to come on the inside here and paint around it. I thought, okay, well, maybe it'd be cool if we could just kind of leave the lines around the outside, but change the inner part in here. And then we're going to click on generative fill and we're going to click on generate. And we're going to see what we're going to get. And I'm going to pause a bunch of times as we go along so you don't have to watch the whole generation process. And so this is what we came up with right here, and it's pretty clunky looking, and it just doesn't look very good at all. So I scrapped that one, and if you uh, want to scrap one of the tries you did here, we can just come over here and click on this, come down and click on the garbage can at the bottom. You can also right-click on it, and there'll be a whole drop-down here. You can click on Delete. So what I tried next is uh, coming in here and using the, I got the right-click and get the Polygon Lasso tool, and what I did is I started out here further so I could catch some of the building but we're not going to take away too much of what we have here because I want to stay underneath this line right there. I noticed with these buildings if you if you leave certain lines and stuff it knows it's there and it paints it better underneath it. So we're going to come over here to the side and we're going to just click here. We're going to click, we're going to hold down our mouse and we're going to get a straight line now we're going to come out here about the middle of the right side of the building. We're going to come down and we're going to try to drop a straight line down, but I want to stay inside this black area here. And we're going to come over and we're going to go there and we're going to come back up. Now, doing it this way is what gave me that pretty decent looking window. So we're going to click on generative fill and then we're going to just say generate. And what it's going to do is probably give me some decent looking stuff, but it's not going to quite get us there. So in the next rendition, see, what we got here is it basically gave me kind of like what we saw over here. It like picked up some other aspects of the building, I'm guessing, and just kind of fed them in there. Let's do this again. That doesn't look very good. That doesn't look very good. We can click on generate again. Let's see if we get something better. And this here actually is not bad at all. It gave us kind of a window opening there. And so these are the ones, well, let me see. So, so it gives us window opening, where is it here? But if you really look at that, it kind of looks like the windows are all smashed out or something, but that's not horrible. If that's the, if that's the absolute worst you had, oops, let's uh, go back out. Let's make it a realistic size that you would be looking at. So it doesn't look that terribly bad on there at all, but let's try to make that a little bit better now. And it came in a little bit too far. And so what we're gonna do again, we're going to, well, let's just leave this one here. We're gonna turn this one off and I'm gonna come back down here and turn on the one that I had that worked properly. And what you're gonna see once I click on this now, I, I put in here for a prompt, instead of just leaving it blank when you do your generative fill, I put in here divided pane windows. That's what I put in there. So let's come back down to the one we had just been working on and let's turn that one back on and turn this one off. And now we're going to say the same thing here. We're just gonna say divided pane windows and we'll hit enter. And now we're gonna see what we come up with. Okay, this isn't horrible. Uh, there's not really any windows there, but it does certainly look like there's some sort of blinds there. Okay, that's not maybe too bad. I mean, this is not that much different than these windows over here. And that's just one big window. So let's just uh, generate this thing again. And do I need to type in that prompt again? Maybe I do. Probably. Divided pane windows. And let's click on generate. Now, maybe what the best thing would be for me to do is to not just continue to generate off of the exact same layers, what these are, uh, might have been better for me to be uh, going out and creating a new layer and deleting the old one. Not really sure that's something you can certainly test, but this here actually looks probably quite acceptable. And let me see here, what else did we have? So I'm thinking that what we had right here, is this one we just had? 
doesn't look quite as good as I come back around to it. But again, we're zoomed way in. So let's zoom back out again and look at that and see, okay, is that something that somebody's going to notice and go, oh, hey, there had been a sign here and somebody photoshopped that thing. Um, because again, this is a drawing in the first place, essentially. And so I think that looks pretty good. I think we're going to leave that one alone. Uh, obviously, again, like I said, you can keep playing around with it, fine-tuning the area you cut out, fine-tuning your prompt, and see what you can come up with. Now, another one I had all kinds of trouble with last night is this one down here. And what I came up with as a solution today is to take, again, this tool that I'm using, the, uh, I forget what it's called here, the poly, po polygonal polygon no, it's got to be polygon is polygonal uh, lasso tool and so we're going to come in here and we're going to come all the way over to the edge here and like i said what i found is leaving the straight lines really helps it to define things and give you a good result and so we're going to just define this entire area here and we're going to take this out and then i'll show you after this runs through one time, what the result is I got by running this a couple of times earlier today. Okay, so that's not terribly great. Let's see what else we got here. Okay, so none of these are great. We can generate this again, but let me show you what I came up with. Uh, we'll turn that one off. This is what I came up with earlier. Is you can it, What it did is it actually picked up the columns above it and if we go through the three variations that it gave me oops i'm, I'm on the wrong one here uh, you always have to click on the layer over here to have this uh flip through it so that one's not bad at all that one there it got close it picked up the columns but not nearly well enough so you got your choice here really that one or this one um i'd say that frankly they're both equally good because again if we zoom out you're not going to you're not going to think anything of that when you're looking at this picture cuz your eyes I mean what would be even bring your eye up there so maybe we try the other one that was this one here and we zoom out and we see, okay, I mean, either way, it looks like the front of the building instead of where that sign had been. So we can zoom back in again there. Let's take a look at one more real quick. And so we're going to stay with this same tool. And now here we have an issue because we have the, um, all the, the design in the side of the building here. And it'd be really nice to be able to continue to pick this up. But I also found earlier that you got this thing down here. It almost looks like a railing. And if you cut this down about halfway, it actually puts a railing right across the top of this building so that would obviously look natural as well so let's just start down here at the bottom and we're going to come down here you just click and then you move your mouse you don't have to hold it down and let's make this line straight as possible and then we're going to come up here and we're only going to come up just above where this lighted area is we're just going to come up here like this, way up at an angle. And that's why this tool is so nice versus using the square, is you can outline exactly the area that you want. And now we're going to click on generate. Now, in this case here, I don't think there's really anything I could come in and say, oh, okay, well, I want to put in some sort of prompts or something. It really just has to replace it with the existing background. And that right there is probably the best result I have gotten out of any of these. I mean, that looks looks almost perfect to what I wanted it to look like. Then on the top over here, we have exactly the same kind of a thing where we're going to have the top of this building and we need to try to maintain, I want to maintain the top of this stuff here. I'm not really sure why I do, but for some reason it looks like it's supposed to be part of the building. So let's maintain that. So I want to start over here in this dark area. And so we're just going to come over and we're going to paint around just by going finding our different spots and just painting around the entirety of the thing in a zigzag pattern and then we're going to come out here and grab some of the clouds we're going to come all the way up to the top over and then down and complete the circle and as you come around and you complete it you saw there was like a little round circle or an eyeball or something i don't know what it's supposed to be that shows up there so now let's just click on generate and see what we get what i ideally want is what i got in the first one 
which is for the building to, uh, I guess it won't let me change while it's generating, the building to continue straight up. If you see what I had over here, uh, we'll go up to the top on this one here. I just have it completely going straight up like that. So this one isn't great. Let's see what else we come up with. All right, that one there. I got a couple of these that almost look like 9-11 kind of the building is blowing up kind of thing. And I was like, yeah, that's not really what I want. So let's uh, regenerate this again. Let's see if we can get it to fill that in. And then if this doesn't work, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in and I'm going to crop it tighter as far as not allowing any of the clouds in there and see if that helps. Yeah, this is not great. Let's see. Um, yeah, none of these are great. So what I'm going to do is let's just click on this over here and we're going to delete this layer out and we're going to start this all over again. And so I'll pause it for a minute. And what I decided to do this time here, we come back here and click on it. If you ever lose it, just come back in and click in the area you were working on and it'll, it'll bring it back. I decided I'm going to cut this off here at an angle and then um, let it uh, not have to worry about this nonsense here and then just build it from the top up. So let's click on generate. Now, what you may or may not have also noticed there is I kept it tighter to the side of the building so that it didn't... Um, uh, it didn't pick up so much of the clouds in the sky, and uh, that's kind of interesting. Let's just generate this one more time and see what we get. So let's see here. Yeah, you know, none of them are great, but it's the very top of the image, so eh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fuss about it anymore. You get the idea. You just keep regenerating and giving it a try until you finally get it to show up the way you want. Same thing down here. Again, let's just uh, take this image and let's just crop this image really tight. And again, uh, working on something like this with this uh, with the the square lasso tool, the polygonal uh, uh, bleh, lasso tool. It just, it makes really quick work of it, um, not using the square one, not using the round one. You just go click, click, click around the image and it pops it right out of there. And hopefully, see this one isn't great. Let's see what else we get. That's not great, that's not great. Let's regenerate here. Let's see if we can make this better. Because then again, we can wipe it out and completely start all over again and see if we get a better version of it like the one I had on the other here like I showed you where in uh, let me slide down here where in it actually replaced the view of the wood so we have the essentially the windows lentil here the floor underneath here you have the columns you have these vertical so you got all the lines you would expect to see in there we're not getting any of that here so let's delete this one out and we'll say yes, we'll delete that out, and we're gonna do it again, but this time, we're gonna go much wider. We're gonna come right here underneath the edge of this window, and we're going to come straight down to here. Probably could have cut that a little longer on the bottom. And again, so the little circle shows up. I guess that means you completed your circle. We're gonna click on that, we're gonna do our generative fill and see what we come up with. And let's see here. Oh, you know, that one's not bad. It gave us windows here at the bottom because all these windows all seem to be different heights. So let's just say that that one's good enough. Let's uh, back out of here. And, you know, I think that's fine. It's catching a little bit more light than some of the other stuff possibly is. But you can maybe even come in here and just kind of colorize that a little bit to make it a little bit darker. So again, somebody who knows what they're doing, come in here and outline this area and paint it in maybe a little bit uh, darker. And then it definitely would be a good look. But I'll show you one thing here. I know this video is getting awfully long already. But um, two more quick things, I guess, I will show you. And one of them is down here at the bottom. Um, and I'll just use this tool because you're going to see this thing right here in the middle of the road. And I was like, what the heck is this thing down here? And I was like, I had no idea what that is. So let's just see if we can uh, cut that little guy out of there and we will hit on generate. But what I wanted to show you is this sign over here. This thing was a real um, hard time getting this thing to work. And what I found is you basically have to do it in bits. So let's 
see here. Uh, any one of these, that one there looks perfect now. Uh, but you have to take this thing apart in bits. And so what I did is I first came in here and said, okay, let's come in here and let's just see if we can remove this here by just cropping around it. And so we did that and we're gonna click on generate and we're gonna just see if we can get rid of that. Okay, so that ain't bad. That's one of the variations. And so now we got rid of it. Now, one of the things I wanted to do is to be able to run this line down here all the way across. So let me show you what the end result was over here. Is uh, took that all the way around the front here and then infilled this whole thing here with windows. And so we started off by just saying, okay, we're going to crop an area here and we're just gonna start uh, right, right in here and we're just gonna come around and we're gonna grab a hold of this and we're just gonna come down and we're going to do that and we're gonna try a generative fill and see if it loads that in. And believe it or not, first try, boom, it actually did it. Let's see what else we got. All right, well, that's actually interesting. It comes up to here, and there's like a pipe that comes out and holds this sign up then. If we wanted to leave some sort of a sign or something there, we could do that. But now let's just see if we can, uh, well, first off, let's take out this, and then we'll try to see if we can finish this across the bottom. So in order to take out the rest of the sign here, let's just come up here around it, and we'll come in pretty tight on it. Let's come up here a little higher. And... Let's do our generative fill and let's see if we can get it erased. Okay, seemed to erase it just fine. See, at this point here, when I was doing this last night, originally I was like, okay, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be perfect. And then I realized, no, I just need to do this part by part by part. And so for each one of these, it's creating a new layer over here. So we can start turning these layers back off and you're going to see the old bits coming back in because they obviously, they don't go anywhere. The original painting, original image is still behind this whole thing. So now what we're gonna do is now I'm gonna see if I can get it to finish this curve all the way along the bottom there. So what I want to do is start over here. Well, let's just start right here at this corner and we'll just click there. We're going to come all the way over to as far as we can over here and click and click down here in the black, come back across and up. And now we're going to generative fill and let's see if we can get that filled in there. And what we got is not too bad. It's a little bit big, a little bit clunky. Um, well, that ain't bad, but let's just generate this. Well, in fact, that ain't bad at all. It really kind of picked up the texture from over here on the side and brought it across the front. The coloration could use a little bit of help. Let's just generate this one more time. Okay, let's see what we got. Yeah, I think, uh, I think this one is probably the best. So we got one last thing we got to do. This here looks like hell in here. So uh, let's do a couple of things. In fact, what I want to do is try to see if I can straighten this thing out up top here. So let's zoom in even a little bit further. And let's see if we can straighten that pipe out. Because I actually did something last night that made me think that I could do that. So let's just start over here at the very edge come all the way over to this edge and then down back across up there and let's just generate okay took it out let's see if there's any version oh see there's a nice straight version let's just generate this one more time Okay, so that there I think is the very best version we're going to come up with. And so now the last thing I want to do is to infill this with some windows just like we did over 
wherever it was. I guess it's probably off the screen here. So let's uh, come up here. Now, I already see something that kind of looks like Windows or something over here. So let's just kind of leave that alone. And we're going to come in basically right underneath what I'm going to call a lentil up here or the top of the window. We're going to come all the way over here. We're going to come down. And basically, we're treating these straight lines as if they are the edges of where we want the window to be. And so we're going to come back over here and we're going to plunk that in and we are going to say generative fill again and generate. So this is the one that I did last night. This is not the one I'm currently working on. And you can see here there was still a break up here. I didn't fix that. I didn't fill in this gap here. But I did get something to look like reasonable um, idea of what windows might be. So let's take a look at what we got on the new one here. This is our first version. Let's see what else we have. Now I will tell you that, now I have not put in the prompt yet of divided windows yet either. Uh, but let's come over here and let's just see which... Um, which one this is. Okay, so here I said just divided windows is what I had on there. And so let's come in here. We're going to put in our prompt of divided windows again, which is uh, pretty much, uh, I think what I put in the other one, maybe it was like uh, divided window panes or something like that. And let's see what it gives us. We'll probably have to do a couple of uh, goes at this, but I think based upon what I've seen so far, I mean, that's not horrible. Now, remember, we are way zoomed in on this thing. So does that look like windows? Yeah, it definitely looks like windows. Um, that definitely look, looks like windows. That definitely looks like windows. And based on the siding here, I think this is the best and the lighting on the windows is nice. Um, so I already had those three which weren't any good. So let's just generate this one more time and then we'll call it a day. Okay, so here's one more. Not sure if we're going through the old ones or the new ones. So this one here I think is the one I like the best. Six out of nine. So, and again, you can keep playing with it. You can change the coloration on here again if you know how to use Photoshop much better than I do, which should be just about everybody on Earth. Um, you can get some pretty good results. But now let's just uh, zoom back out on this thing, and this is what it looks like. I don't think anyone would ever be able to tell what's going on here. You may even have the shadow of this Zeppelin here reflecting on the window over here. I don't know. Maybe I'm just making that up. But again, we had a couple more signs we need to take out. But otherwise, I think that this is a pretty good looking cleaned up copy. I would clean up this up here a little bit better as well. And I might even still work on this window some more. But I think this window's even better than the one that I came up with last night. Yeah, I would have to say that, that uh, this one here is an even better window. And again, your eye is going to be drawn to this huge blimp right there in the middle. So that's all I got. If you got any questions, just let me know.